feel free to grab a laptop. Um, while you can use Chrome on the iPad, it's a completely different experience. And I'm going to be talking mostly about the Chrome browser on the computer. So hopefully those machines have Chrome on them. Anybody logged into one and it's got Chrome on it? Yeah. Okay, this is the website I'm going to be using today, and I need you to make your way over there since everybody's got a device. Um, if you have an iPad or an iPhone, you can sure scan the QR code, but on your computer, the website is listed right there. Um, I want this to be an interactive session today, so we'll have you head on over to that. Um, I do have a Padlet going. Um, that I have forgotten to mention in my other sessions, but if you would like to jump on the Padlet, you can leave questions there or comments or um, apps that you've used in Chrome or extensions that you've used in Chrome. So uh, you can pull up that Padlet board as well in a new tab and uh, we'll kind of do some double duty here. Uh, my name is Mickey Mueller. I'm the Educational Technology Facilitator for Norfolk Public Schools up in the northeast corner of Nebraska. I am a proud UNL graduate. Uh, 1993 is when I graduated, and I did my student teaching at Norris. So I uh, hear you guys are all in your student teaching right now, right? So how many elementary teachers do I have in the room? Okay, and any secondary teachers? Okay, just one. All right. Well, I was a business teacher before I took this job, so my background is also secondary, uh, 7 through 12. Although one year I did teach an elementary keyboarding class and um, scared the living daylights out of me to have to teach that class. I think you're either suited for high school kids or you're suited for elementary kids, and the other, and the other one scares the bejesus out of you. So um, uh, I do have some experience. Now in this job, I do work with children or with kids of all ages as well as teachers of all ages. So we're going to talk about the Chrome browser. Now, how many of you currently use the Chrome browser as your main browser? Okay, fantastic. I'm hoping to change a few more minds in here today um, as we go through this. So if you want to go over to this Chrome tab um, and go down to Shiny Happy Chrome, I actually have a little questionnaire. You didn't know you were going to have a quiz today, but I have a quiz for you that I'd like you to fill out. Um, the Chrome questionnaire, it's right there linked on the Shiny Happy Chrome section. And if you would uh, start by just taking a minute to fill that out um, and tell me what you know about uh, Chrome and browsers. I can't see what you answered. Somebody's going to have to tell me their answer for what is a browser. We got to be speaking the same language when we're going through this session. So this is why I wanted you to kind of take that little quiz and tell me what you thought about those different things. Are we not done yet? Do we need more time? Okay. So who wants to volunteer their answer? What is a browser? Yeah. It was an application used to. An application used to search the internet. Okay. Close. Anybody else want to share their answer? Yeah. Like a place where you go to get on the internet? Bingo. Okay, a browser is a program or an application, as we're starting to call programs now, that you use to access the internet. Okay, that's what a browser is. So give me some examples of browsers that you have used. Firefox. Firefox. Safari. Safari. Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer. Chrome. Chrome. Okay, those are browsers. Then I asked you, what is a search engine? So now you know what a browser is. If you were confused between browser and search engine, you should be able to figure out what a search engine is now. Yeah? It's a website to help you look for different things or find another website. Right. It's a, a website that allows you to find different things on the internet. Okay? You have to have a browser in order to have a search engine. Okay? You can't have one without the other. Well, you can have a browser without a search engine, but you can't have a search engine without a browser. Okay, So give me some examples of search engines you guys have used. Google. Google. Bing. Yahoo. Bing. Bing. Uh, what other choices did I give you on there? Those are the big ones. Okay. True or false, it is possible to have more than one browser on my computer. True. Okay. On this computer here, we actually have Internet Explorer and Chrome. Okay? On your iPad, you might have Chrome and Safari. 
On your maps, do you have Safari, Chrome, anything else on those maps? This Firefox. Firefox, okay. So it is possible to have multiple browsers on a computer. Can you use two browsers at the same time? Absolutely, okay, and I do that a lot. Um, when I, something doesn't work for me in Chrome, I will switch to Internet Explorer and to try and determine if it's the browser. Okay, so you can, absolutely can have multiple browsers on your computer. I can have the same browser on my computer and my smartphone and my tablet. True or false? That's true. I have the same browser on Chrome on my laptop, on my desktop at home, on my iPhone, and on my iPad. Okay, and that Chrome is the same on all of those devices. Okay? Now you might have Safari on your iPad and your iPhone and your Mac, but that Safari doesn't talk to each other. Okay? And the difference is with Chrome you have the ability to log in. And logging in with your Google account enables you to carry all of the things, all of your saved things from one Chrome to the next, no matter where you're at. Okay, last question was what is a bookmark? What's a bookmark? Nobody? A bookmark is a shortcut to a website. Oh, here's one extension we're going to talk about here in a minute. I'm going to leave that going. Let's just move it. We'll talk about this in a minute. Okay? An extension is nothing more than a shortcut to a website. And you can see I have all, or excuse me, a bookmark is a shortcut to a website. So here are all bookmarks that I have that take me to different websites. Okay? The ones that I frequently access, for example, um, I moved back to the senior high after a few years of being gone. I don't know the bell schedule because I don't have students assigned to me. So if I want to make sure that I'm not out in the hallway when 1,200 students are out in the hallway, I need to know the bell schedule. So I have that linked right there so that I can access it quick and easy. Okay? So a bookmark is just a shortcut to a website. Okay, we're going to try this video. They took my sound down, so we're going to try this one, and if it doesn't work, it's not going to work. Okay. All right, so a browser is nothing more than a program that gets you onto the Internet. Okay, and you can see some different browsers listed here. We've talked about those already, Internet Explorer, Chrome, uh -huh. Firefox. Okay, are your big heavy hitters. Um, I use Chrome exclusively. Norfolk is a Google Apps for Education district. If your school is a Google Apps for Education district, anytime you Google, do any of those applications, you should be using the Chrome browser. Okay, and the reason for that is because Chrome was built for Google Apps for Education. You can use Google Apps for Education in other browsers, but you may not find the full functionality of those programs unless you're using Chrome. So if you're saying, I can't do such and such, I'm going to ask you, what browser are you using? And if you're using Internet Explorer, I'm going to tell you to switch to Chrome. So if your school district is a Google Apps for Education district, they will want you to use Chrome when you're doing Google Apps for Education. Okay. The advantage of use, there's lots of advantages of using Chrome. It's a sleek, fast browser. If you put Internet Explorer and Chrome side by side and load the same websites, they're going to load faster in Chrome. Okay? But the advantage of Internet or Chrome is the ability to sign in. And so I'm here on my desktop, and I think the map is the same way. Do you have these three little hot dogs in the upper right-hand corner? Can you see those three little hot dogs? Okay, if you pull that menu down, you should see signed in as, or maybe it's not, it doesn't say, does it say sign in? Okay, that is asking for you to sign in. To use the Chrome browser to its fullest extent and capabilities, you want to sign into that browser. And you can use any Google account to sign in. So if you have a school Google account, you could sign in with that account. I'm actually signed into my personal Google account here um, because that's where I have most of my apps and extensions stored, is in my personal account. So I've gone ahead and signed in there. Now again, I am not using a computer that I own. I'm actually using the university's computer here. But I went ahead and signed in so that I could have access to all of my settings in Chrome so that I could demonstrate those to you today. You can sign in on every device that you have. So on my iPhone, I actually have Chrome um, is the browser that I use and I'm signed in to that browser in Chrome. Um, I also have an iPad that has Chrome on it and I am signed into Chrome on that iPad. By signing into those devices, that enables me to have bookmarks that I have saved here. 
um, I can access those from my iPhone or my iPad. Or if I start working on something in my iPad, but I have to go to another classroom or another building or I need to leave to go home, I can access that very same website on my desktop computer at home. So signing into Chrome allows you to access Chrome no matter what device you're using, and you have access to the same things. So you'll just want to be sure if you're using one of the university's computers that after you're done, you need to sign out of Chrome, okay? <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about searching, okay? If you wanted to do an internet search for a website, okay, you wanted to find information for a um, unit that you're going to start teaching on the metric system, how would you go about doing that? How many of you would go to google.com, okay, or bing.com or yahoo.com and do your search there, right? Okay, well in Chrome, we can use the Omnibox to search. And the Omnibox is right here. Okay, this is the Omnibox. In other browsers, it's called the URL or the address bar. In Chrome, it's called the Omnibox because it does more than just display the web address. So I'm gonna open a new tab, and um, most modern browsers allow you to um, have multiple tabs open, and on any given day, I could have 50 tabs open, and I am not kidding you, okay? I'm a tabaholic, okay? You might be too after you get done with today's session. All right, so you can open up a new tab, and instead of using the search here or going to google.com, I'm going to conduct my search from right here, okay? And I don't need to type HTTP or www if I know the name of the website I want to go to. So let's say I want to check the weather for this weekend. So I can type in uh, weather.com and hit enter, okay? It's going to take me right to the weather channel. No HTTP, colon, slash, slash, no www, okay? Most websites will allow you to access them without including that information. If I wanted to go to YouTube, okay, I can type YouTube. My neck's gonna hurt by the time I'm done with this presentation. YouTube.com, okay? So you don't need the www, you don't need the HTTP, save yourself some time, and uh, don't add those things. Okay, you need to do a Google search. We're gonna use that Omnibox, all right? So let's open up a new tab, and we're gonna search for some different things, okay? You got some free time this weekend, you wanna know what movies are playing in Lincoln. So you're gonna search movies Lincoln, Nebraska. Open up a new tab, and in the Omnibox, type movies, Lincoln, Nebraska. No capital letters, no comma, <coughs> movies, Lincoln, Nebraska, okay? And it's gonna bring up this nice knowledge graph that gives me a nice picture indicating all of the movies that are playing in Norfolk, Nebraska. I mean, Lincoln, Nebraska, this weekend. You guys have a lot more choices than we do in Norfolk, I'll just tell you. We have seven theaters and three of them show the same things. So um, you guys can go see a lot of movies, okay? All right, I love this one. Let's say you want to define a word, okay? So you're gonna type define, uh, discombobulate. Okay, define, discombobulate. Whenever you put define in front of the word, it's gonna give you a definition. And what I love, and what you guys can try out on your machines, you won't be able to hear it here, but see the speaker icon? Oh, that was me. It will actually pronounce the word, and what I love about the pronunciation is that it was a real human voice. A lot of times with those pronunciations, you get a computer-generated voice, and especially for little kids, those computer-generated voices can be hard to understand. So I love that this is a real human voice that's very easy to understand. It gives you the definition of the word, and you can also get some additional information. You can see the origin of the word and when it came into use. And you can see really after the 1950s, it spiked in the word use of discombobulate. Okay, so this weekend the Huskers are at home, and
and the weather is supposed to be nice, but next weekend I believe they are in East Lansing, Michigan, okay? So let's find out what the weather is going to be like in East Lansing, Michigan for the Husker game. So we're going to go to a new tab and we're going to type weather. a lot of information in a short um, series and this is called a knowledge graph okay and so rather than doing a search and getting hit with a big long list of search term search results which you do if you scroll down a lot of the searches that you perform in Google will give you these snapshot pictures of the search results um, in a little pictorial form which is kind of nice all right, so let's check out how the Huskers did this weekend. So we're going to search for Nebraska Corn Huskers. And again, um, this will do this for most of the top teams in the country. It will show you their last results, uh, their last game results, and it will tell you when, the, where, and when the next game is. Close some of these tabs. Okay, you're doing a little, uh, maybe you're gonna travel or maybe you're having your students plan a vacation, uh, a virtual vacation, and they wanna go to the Eiffel Tower. So let's see what we can find about the Eiffel Tower. And again, here over on the right hand side, it will give you this snapshot of information. So it includes a picture, it includes a map, and it includes some information from Wikipedia. So maybe this is all of the information that you need and you don't even need to visit any of these other websites. Um, you maybe just wanted to find the address or you wanted to find when it was built. These knowledge graphs will give you little snapshots of information um, and so that you might not even have to go into any of these other links. And so Google is doing that with a lot of their um, searches, okay? You're doing a, a unit on the metric system and you aren't even sure how many centimeters are in an inch. All you need to do is Google inches to centimeters. And it tells you that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters, okay? You don't have a calculator on hand? And this works with more complex problems, but I'm just going to do 2 plus 5. And it will give you a result as well as a calculator. So if you wanted to do further calculations, you could do that right there. But this is my favorite one for a teacher, okay? Especially for elementary school teachers, you're all about being on the clock and moving from place to place in a timely fashion. Let's say you need a timer, okay? And you don't have time to pull one up in your smart notebook. You don't have access to one. Just Google it. So I want a 10 second timer. Automatically starts the timer. I can make this full screen so that that's the only thing that's showing on my screen and the kids aren't focusing on uh, fancy little icons. And it will play a sound, um, which you would, should be able to hear if you try it on your own machines, um, when the time is up. So it's a great visual, but it also gives you that auditory so that you, if you're not looking at the computer screen when the timer goes off, you will be able to hear that um, to prompt you that the time has gone off. And to get out of full screen, you just hit escape and you're right back at it. So you can Google, and that works for any time. You want a minute timer? Google one minute timer, and that will show right up there for you. Okay. Now, I'm going to point out this little microphone right here, okay? You can actually search by voice, so you don't even have to do any typing. And this will work on your computers if you want, probably, it'll probably work better if you try it than if I try it. But if you click on that microphone, you can Google, you can say any Google search you want. So would somebody just be a sport and try it for me? You can do one of the search terms that we already did. Nobody wants to try it? 
Have you seen the commercials that have been out about with the little girl with the phone? And she's laying next to her dog and she wants to know if dogs dream. And she says, okay, Google. Did you hear it? So I'm gonna go back into that. I'm actually using the Google app, okay? There's a Google search app that's available for your iPad and your iPhone as well as your Android devices. And how you activate this is if you say, okay, Google. Weather in East Lansing, Michigan. Okay, so any of those searches that we previously did, you can do this way as well. I like this for little kids, okay? They may know they need to do a search and find out um, what a cumulus cloud is, but how many second graders are going to be able to spell cumulus cloud, okay? Probably not many, but as long as they can say cumulus cloud, they can still conduct a search using either the iPad, the iPad iPhone, um, iPod, or any uh, computer, as long as it has a microphone, so any laptop computer would be able to do that. All right. Another thing that I love about Chrome is the ability to personalize Chrome. So that my Chrome is the way I want it every time I log into Chrome. By personalizing Chrome, you can do several different things. One thing you can do is add the home button, which I have added right here. Okay, and remember, this isn't my computer. This is the university's computer. I've never used this computer before today. But when I click the home button, it's gonna go to Norfolk Public Schools because that is how, that is what I have that home button set to. And even though this isn't my computer, it still brings forward my Chrome settings and I'm able to customize that. So, some of these customization things, we're gonna go up to the hot dogs and you're gonna go down to settings, okay? And this is where you're able to um, customize some of these things. For example, what I just showed you, the home button, that's not on by default in Chrome. You actually have to turn that on and that's under appearance. So if I just check that, show the home button, that's gonna put the little house next to my Omnibox, okay? And then you can determine what you want the home button to be. So maybe you want the home button to be UNL's webpage, or you want the home button to be your school district's webpage, whatever it is, whatever webpage you use frequently, that's just a nice, easy, quick way to get there, um, simply. So you can customize that, and that's right here, okay? The other thing that I have done is I have a check to always show the bookmarks bar, all right? So here is the bookmarks bar on this machine. These are all little shortcuts that I have put to different websites that allow me to quickly and easily access those websites. Now, how do you get something down on that bookmarks bar? Do you know? Would you click and drag the icon that's on your Omni box? It. You absolutely do. There's multiple ways that you can do it, but that's my favorite way. So let's say you wanted to bookmark this page so that you could come back to it when you were on your own computer and add some of these things to your, uh, your Chrome, even though it'll be customized this way when you get to your Chrome, when you sign in. If you click the little lock in front of the address there and drag that down, see how I have a hold of it? Okay, And I can drop that anywhere on that bookmarks bar. And when I let go, now I have a quick, easy shortcut that will take me right to that website. You'll notice over here on the left-hand side, see how I have these little icons, okay? Those are all still bookmarks, but those websites have a favicon that means something, okay? Actually, these are all websites that I've done. So I always put a favicon on my website so that I can visually recognize what that is. So this bookmark that I just added also has the favicon plus words after it. By just putting the favicon there, I'm able to put a whole bunch more bookmarks down there, okay? So if you want to edit the bookmark that you created, you're going to right click, and you'll go to edit, and you can change that bookmark to whatever you want it to say. So for example, maybe your school is, you know, uh, LPS. You could just put LPS and that would visually remind you that that was your bookmark to um, Lincoln Public Schools. In some cases, like these bookmarks that I have set over here on the right-hand side, the picture is all I need to know what that bookmark is. So I will delete all of the words so that there is nothing in the name, and I will click Save. So now, instead of the words behind that, I just have a little star that I can click and go to. So you can customize those bookmarks and make them fit however you want. If you want to remove a bookmark, 
right click on it and delete. Okay. Can you customize the symbol? You cannot because that comes from the website itself. Okay. That would be great if you could because I would change a few of these. Um, but that comes from the website itself. Now, you may have bookmarks on here. I get teachers all the time that when I show them how to turn the bookmarks bar on, they're like, wow, I have a lot of things down here. And they didn't know that they were bookmarking things because they didn't have that bookmarks bar turned on. So if you see two little flag things over here, if you click on that, you may have more bookmarks than what you can see on the bookmarks bar. Okay, so if you fill that up, it will still keep saving bookmarks, but they'll just, they just won't be visually listed there. Another way that you can bookmark something, next to every site in the Omnibox, you'll see a star. If you click that star, that will also bookmark the site. And if you have your bookmarks bar turned on, it will add that to the bookmarks bar. Okay, edit bookmarks. All right, some shortcuts in Chrome. These are things, um, do, keyboard shortcuts, do you guys use keyboard shortcuts? Okay, I do sometimes. Um, in Chrome, I've always found to copy and paste something, it's better to use the keyboard shortcuts than to try and right click and copy and right click and paste. So I always use control C and control V, okay, for copy and paste. But some other Chrome um, shortcuts that you might want to be familiar with, if you do control shift T, I'm gonna go over here to Norfolk Public Schools, I'm gonna close that. If I do control shift T, that's gonna open up the last tab that I closed. So you, ought, you accidentally close out of a tab and you really needed to have that, control shift T will bring that back and it will continue to bring back tabs. So if I do control shift T again, okay, control shift T again, it's gonna to continue to bring back tabs that I have closed. Oops, I really wanted that one. Okay, arrange tabs. I, at any given day, I could have 20, 30 tabs open. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not a map person. And you guys were wanting to try that and you weren't knowing what to do. Thank you. Command shift T. So if I say control, you do command. Thanks. Okay. On any given day, I could have 20 tabs open in a window. And sometimes I maybe want to rearrange those tabs. If you click on a tab and drag it, you can rearrange those tabs. So you just click on a tab and drag it to arrange it to a new position. Okay. Sometimes I get so many tabs going that I would like to start a new window and have even more tabs. Okay. To do that, I'm going to click on the tab and drag it out and down. Now it's become its own window. So now I can start filling up this window with tabs. Okay. And if I, for whatever reason, would want to put those back together, just click on it and drag it back to the window. So click and drag down will move a tab out into its own window. Click and drag it back, we'll move it back in. Okay. Normally, in my other account, um, I have three tabs, like this little Gmail one that I just put there. Notice how that's tiny. Okay, that's called a pinned tab. So you can take things that you frequently use. For example, I always have my mail open, I always have my calendar open, and I always have my drive open. And so those three tabs I have pinned so that they always stay open. And by pinning a tab, it makes it teeny tiny, and then again, you're able to add more tabs. So pinned tabs are good for things that you frequently access. Okay. So how do you pin a tab? You right click on the tab and you go to pin tab. And that's going to condense the tab so that only the favicon or the icon associated with that site shows. So it's good for websites that you frequently use. For me, it's calendar, Gmail, and Drive. Those are the three tabs that I have pinned. And when I open Chrome, I have those tabs set to open when I open Chrome. 
so that I don't ever go in and access my Gmail. It's always open, it's always available. Okay, how do you set those pages to be like that? If you go to your settings, okay, the three little hot dogs, that's up here at the top on startup, you have some choices. You can open the new tab page. You can continue where you left off. So at the end of the day, you're done teaching, you close out of Chrome, you've got 25 tabs open. If you select continue where you left off, the next day when you come in and you start up Chrome, it's going to open those same 25 tabs. All right? Or you can open a specific set of pages. So you can pin your tabs, calendar, Gmail, and Drive. Go to settings, open a specific set of pages, and you can set those pages. So that every time you start Chrome, it will open those pages. No, I forgot one line. If you're done with a pinned tab, right click, unpin tab. Okay? You change your mind, you can right click and unpin tab. All right. Um, oh, and to bring up this shortcut menu that I've been playing with, if you right click on a tab, you can see that you can add, access any of these items. Control T would give you a new tab. So if you didn't want to click on the new tab button, you could do Control T. You want to reload the tab that you're on, it's Control R. You can duplicate a tab. So if I want this exact same tab duplicated, I can do that. Pin tab, we just went over. You can close a tab, although I probably wouldn't do that from there. I would just close that right there. Um, close tabs to the right, close other tabs, reopen close tab, bookmark all tabs, okay? So that's that shortcut menu when you right click. All right, questions at this point. Okay, open up a new tab. And in the Omnibox, I would like you to search, do a barrel roll. Woo! Okay. And then the next thing I want you to search is askew, A-S-K-E-W. Oh, nothing they took out. Can it do it? Yeah. Can it do off kilter? So um, I think the Google developers get bored, and so they make these little Easter eggs that they'll sometimes throw out there, and sometimes they're just out there for a little bit. Like one year at Christmas time, they did. If you um, Googled "Let It Snow," snow would start falling <laughs> in the browser, uh, and then the song would play. Um, but sometimes they take them out. So that one I don't think is still available, but uh, do a barrel roll and a skew are still there. So um, sometimes they just do crazy little things like that. All right, how many of you know about Kahoot? You know Kahoot? All righty, we're gonna play Kahoot. So I need you to open up a new tab and I need you to go to kahoot.it. Kahoot.it. Actually, if you click on the Kahoot logo down there, it'll take you right there. Kahoot.it. Okay. Kahoot is a games based student response system. This is great if you have devices in your classroom or you can access devices um, and you're getting ready for a test or a quiz that you need to review. Kahoot is a super fun way to do that. So are you all at kahoot.it and it's asking you for a PIN number? Okay, so a minute here it's gonna generate a PIN number. So you're going to put in 58200 for your PIN number, 58200. And then it will probably ask you for a nickname, yes. Go ahead and put that in. And here we can see people have started to come into the room. Um, as a teacher, one of the things that's really nice because here you are letting your kids, you know, input their name themselves. As a teacher, I could come in here and kick any kid out. So if somebody puts in an inappropriate word for their name, that would never happen, would it? Um, you can kick them right out, okay? So you, as a teacher, you have that option. I don't think I kicked out the mouse, so you're still in. All right? 
So what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a question about one of the things that we just talked about, okay? And you're gonna get two or four answer choices. And you have to read the question and pick the correct answer. Fastest, oh, there's a new thing. We gotta be talking about this so you guys are quit wondering what that is. Um, fastest fingers is important. So the correct answer gets you points, but also if you're the first person to get the correct, correct answer, you get even more points, all right? So there's your question, which of the following is a browser? Here come your choices. Match up your choice with what you've got on your computer screen there. You have a time limit. I made this one a little bit longer in case some of you hadn't played Kahoot before because sometimes it's hard to get that visual, the hand-eye coordination down, okay? So you can specify a time anywhere from five seconds to 120 seconds per question, okay? So if it was a story problem that you were doing in math, you might want to extend that time. It's multiple choice, true, false, give them a short period of time. It then tells you what the correct answer is and how many answered it correct. And on the next screen, we will see that Megan 3 is in the lead, followed closely by Lebowski, okay? So we can go on to the next question. We can also end the quiz right now. So you don't have to go through every question that you have prepared. You can end at any time. So which of the following is a search engine? Okay, and you'll notice that that time, we didn't go through the entire amount of time that I allotted for that question because all of you had turned in your answers, it stopped at four seconds. So we didn't have to wait for everybody to, for that time to expire. So Google was the correct answer on that one. We can see eight of you got it right. So we'll see, Lebowski is now in the lead. In Chrome, the URL or the address bar is called Again, they had six seconds left, but since everybody had answered, they went ahead and ran out the time. This works on any web-enabled device. So you can use this on iPads, iPods, iPhones, Android devices, your computers, laptops, any web-enabled device. Kelsey is now in the lead. True or false? Y'all knew the answer to that one. Hey, alright, everybody got right. Thank you. <laughs> Kelsey's still in the lead. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, y'all got that right, too. Good job. I think there's two more questions. One more after this. And the thing that I like about Kahoot is that if you were doing this for a review and you saw a lot of the students get the question wrong, it allows you to stop. You can go over that information, correct the misinformation before you go on to the next one. There's one more question. Um, for an assessment. So it's a really fun tool. 
Um, I'm so glad so many, so many of you hadn't seen it yet. I love Kahoot, and I've not found an age group of students or adults that don't like playing Kahoot. Can you upload pictures for your Yes, questions? you can. You absolutely can. Um, and I didn't have any uploaded in this one, but you can add pictures that will show in yeah the, each of the questions. If you don't want like kids to see who won and who like is when is there a way to not show? This Unfortunately, story? in this one there isn't. And with Kahoot, you really have to show it on a projector because you've got to be able to see the answer choices for your device. So there isn't a way to enable that. But this is free, doesn't cost you anything. And another good thing about Kahoot, and this is totally off my topic, this has nothing to do about Chrome, but I just love this, um, I just love this tool, okay? The other thing about Chrome, there are 300 and almost 40,000 public Kahoots. So chances are somebody else has already developed a Kahoot for a topic that you wanna teach. So you can go in here and look and you can reuse other people's Kahoots. And if there's a couple of questions you don't like, add it to your account and you can change those questions. So it's a fun tool. Any other questions about Kahoot before we go back to the real topic, Chrome? Where did you find that one? What was that? What that is under, if you create an account, okay. and when you create, when you, on the teacher side, you go to getkahoot.com, okay? Students enter at kahoot.it to enter the, take the quiz. You go to getkahoot.com, create an account, and then once you create an account, you can access the public. So me, these are the quizzes that I have developed. Public are quizzes that everybody else has developed and shared with the uh, Kahoot community. Let's talk some more about Chrome. All right, so now we're gonna go on. We're, our Chrome is shiny and happy because we've customized it, we've signed in, we've added the home button, we've pinned some tabs, um, we've made it our own. Now we need to take Chrome to the next level, okay? And we're gonna talk about extensions and apps. And this is what sets apart the Chrome browser from other browsers that you may have used, okay? In Chrome, you have the option to add extensions, which are little tiny programs that add additional functionality to your Chrome browser. So up here, these are all of my extensions that I have installed here, okay? And I pulled out here so that you could see what those are. You also have apps. And apps in Chrome are basically shortcuts to websites. They are websites that are optimized to run in Chrome. Okay? So you may see some apps on here that we're going to look at that you say, hey, that's an iPad app. Okay? Yep, there are some that are on the iPad and they are available for Chrome. Okay? Now, I've given you lots of suggestions that I'm gonna let you play with here in a minute. I'm gonna point out a few that are my favorite. Now, if you signed into Chrome on that computer that you're borrowing, okay, when you go to your own computer and sign into Chrome, all of these apps and extensions will come with you. Okay, so the work that you're doing today, you can actually go back and use on your own machine. All right, so we're gonna talk about some extensions first. And the first one I have on here, and where do you go to get these apps and extensions? Well, you go to the Chrome Web Store, okay? And I have that linked for you right up here at the top of the page. The Chrome Web Store is akin to iTunes, okay? Your app store in iTunes, same kind of thing, okay? These are listing webs or Chrome apps and Chrome extensions. And you can see that they are categorized into collections. They have a whole education section. Or if you have an idea of what it is that you're looking for, you can simply just search the store, okay? But these are all different apps and extensions and categories that they have available. All right, so some of my faves. Okay, every teacher needs to have magic actions for YouTube, okay? And I talked about this in my morning session, but I didn't get a chance to demo it because I wasn't signed in, but I am signed in now. Magic actions for YouTube. Okay, you may have a great YouTube video that you want to show in class. Okay, it's the content of the video itself is perfectly appropriate. What gets you in trouble in a room full of students when showing YouTube videos? Side. The side stuff, all of the suggested videos. I don't care what Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez did over the weekend, and I don't want my students to be seeing it. Okay, it's the stuff on the side, it's the comments that people leave on the bottom. 
That's what gets you in trouble. It's not the video itself. The video itself is absolutely appropriate. So what Magic Actions for YouTube does is it blocks out all of that other crap. So I'm going to go to YouTube. And right now, YouTube looks okay, what YouTube always looks like. And I know that I have that extension installed because up here in the Omnibox, can you see this little magic wand? Okay, that extension is now working. So this is an extension that lives in the Omnibox versus being out here next to the Omnibox. So I'm going to find... Okay, and hopefully this is set up right. I apologize, it's not, there we go. Okay, so what's missing? This is YouTube, I'm on YouTube, but what don't you see? All of the crap that generally gets you in trouble. So what Magic Actions for YouTube does is it just blurs out all of that stuff so you don't have to see it. I have a third grade teacher in my district who said, oh, just every time I go to YouTube, my kids know that they have to turn around and face the back wall until she gets the video pulled up and then they can turn around and watch the video. And I'm like, oh, you don't need to do that anymore. We'll install Magic Actions for YouTube and you won't have that problem. You can configure this so that it runs as soon as you click on the video to play it. Okay? Every elementary teacher needs to have magic actions for YouTube. Is that a good one? I, I do like when I get oohs and ahs. So if you see something that you really like, if you want to ooh a little bit, that'll just make my day. Okay, and if you're a Star Wars fan and you have not seen this parody, it is hilarious. Okay, I just, it's, it's super funny. So that's magic actions for YouTube. Okay, all of these right here are linked. So if you click on the link, it will open up that in the Chrome Web Store. And if you find one, uh, now I already have this added, okay? Yours, it will say up here in blue, it will say free, okay? Click on the free, it may ask you, are you sure you wanna add this? Click add and it will install in your Chrome, okay? That works for any of these that I'm gonna go over. And then once you go back to your school and you sign into your own computer, you will have access to that extension, okay? So all of these are linked right here. Okay, I'm going to go over an app to show you the difference between an app and an extension. So if I open up a new tab, my apps live right here. All the way over in the left hand side, I have this little app switcher, okay? If I click on that, I'm going to show you all of the apps that I have already preloaded on my account, and I have lots of them, okay? And to access an app, you simply click on it. Okay? And so an app is basically a shortcut to a website. So this is Google a day, and this does a great job of helping you learn search, appropriate search in Google. I haven't been here for a minute, for a long time, so let's see. Okay? So when you go to Google a day, it basically takes you out of the Google browser and kind of locks you into this demo browser, and it asks you a question. My week moniker is the controversial proposed high-speed rail system between London and Birmingham, commonly known. Does anybody know that right on the top of their head? Sometimes you get a question that you do know. Is it the two? The two? Oh, yeah. Think I needed the the in there? No. So basically, you can try and guess, and it's timed, okay? Or you can come up and do a Google search to try and figure out the correct answer, okay? So I like to use Google a day for middle school, junior high, high school students to kind of help them learn how to search effectively, okay? So that is an app. Let me see which one I is, okay? And you do the same thing to install. You would click on it. I'm gonna to go to one that I don't have installed. Um, which I have most of these installed. Okay, we'll this one. So when it, it will say free, you click on free and it will install in your browser, okay? Some other ones that are favorites of mine that you may also recognize from iOS apps. Um, there's Nearpod. Do any of you use Nearpod? 
Okay, that was an iOS app first. How about Class Dojo? I know there's some Class Dojo users out there. Okay, there's the Class Dojo app. Okay, that you can use. Class Dojo is a behavior management system that worked uh, was initially developed for iPads. It's now available as a Chrome app as well. So that's an option. So again, I already have that installed, so I would be able to launch it from there. Um, Pinterest. I don't have anybody that likes Pinterest in here, do I? Okay, I'm sorry, Pinterest is an awesome way to find stuff for your classrooms. I love the bulletin board ideas on Pinterest. I should have been an elementary teacher because I love me some bulletin boards, even in my high school classroom. Um, there is a pin it button right there. So I can click that pin it button and I can pin any one of these images right to my Pinterest page. Okay, I'm not logged in right now, but so that's instead of using, do I have a pin? I don't have, I took it off. I like this colorful little button instead to do, do to pin things. So I'm going to let you kind of explore some of those. Oh, we haven't talked about this one, okay? This is the Move It extension, okay? And this keeps coming up. This is great for brain breaks, okay? Brain breaks are all the rage right now. You Go Noodle, do you guys know Go Noodle? Okay, Go Noodle is great for brain breaks, but this is an extension that you can add to Chrome that you can customize and say every 15 minutes, every half an hour, come up and give me a, a, an activity. And what this is designed, it was designed by a PE teacher to get his students up and moving. And I actually use this in my office. I have it set to go at 30 minute intervals. And every 30 minutes, that reminds me that I need to get up and move instead of just sitting in my desk all the time. And so it will give you, we've seen 10 large circles with your arms, jumping jacks, run in place. But you could also use these, definitely use these in the classroom and you for a brain break. And that one, and it will not, it kind of hijacks your browser until you actually click the done button. But that one is right here. And here's where I can specify how long I want to go in between breaks. So I have mine set for 30 minutes. You might set it for longer in your classroom. Uh, but this is a great way, again, just to do that brain break and get those act the kids active um, and just right in their place. They can do 10 arm circles right standing in their place, gets them out of their seat and maybe refocuses on what they need to do. And it, this one I like too because I can come right here and, and, and disable it, so, which I should have done at the start of this presentation so I didn't start keep, in, keep in interrupting us, uh, but you can disable it from right there. Okay, so I'm gonna let you explore. If you don't like any of those, go to the Chrome Web Store yourself and just look around and see what you might find. So I'm gonna give you about, um, maybe about five, ten, five, seven minutes to kind of look around and see what you can find and then we're gonna share out, okay? So you're gonna find something and it can be from my list if you wanna share something from my list that you thought you liked. But I want you to find an app or an extension I want you to install one app, at least one extension and one app in your browser, and then we're going to share out. So you got about five minutes. And which one was that? The Google Sunrise. Google Sunrise. That's a calendar. Yeah. Calendar app. Okay. Uh, I think Duo Window. And it's like you can learn different languages. Duolingo, yes, that is, an, uh, is also an iOS app, and that's a, a language builder app. Anybody else want to share an app or extension that they tried out? I like PicMonkey. It's like a, uh, just like photo booth, but for free. It's super kid friendly. Did you do the app or the extension? Um, did you know that there's both? I did the, um, the extension. Okay. And with the, there's, PicMonkey is both an app or an extension. So if you use Pic Collage on the iPad, PicMonkey is a really great web alternative. There is an app that will take you to the PicMonkey website that you can create a collage or edit a photo, but there's also an extension. And I'm gonna get to this. What this extension does, it's right here, it's this cute little monkey guy. If I click on that, it's gonna look through this web page and it's gonna find all of the images on this web page. And so rather than saving the image and then going to PicMonkey and opening it, if I click the image here, it's gonna open up the PicMonkey app and it's gonna have that photo already loaded in the PicMonkey app for me to then edit it. So PicMonkey has both an app and an extension. That is a good one. What else did you find that you liked, that you thought you might give a try? Yeah. Well, we were kind of looking at this one a lot 
that you have pulled up because it was really cool that you don't have to share your numbers. It's just a way for you to get a message out fast, quick, easy, and they can't reply. Right, and I'm gonna highlight this one because this is one of my favorites. It's called Remind. It, it used to be called Remind 101, and they just rebranded over the summer. It's called Remind, and what it is is a free text messaging service. And as she mentioned, I don't have to give out my cell phone number, and you don't have to give me your cell phone number to be a part of this. Um, with, Remind one, with Remind, this is the first time I've demoed it since they've changed. With Remind, what you do is you set up classrooms, okay? So I have, and I think 10 classrooms is what you can set up with unlimited people in the classroom, okay? So you guys are mostly elementary teachers, so you would probably have a classroom for your parents, okay? Because most of your kiddos aren't gonna probably have cell phones, although I bet some of them do. Okay, at the high school level, I might have a classroom for my parents and a classroom for my students. Okay, because I might want to send parents different messages than I would want to send my students. So for the elementary level, this is great. Okay, you're going on a field trip and they have to have a permission slip returned to you that you sent home with the kid in the kid's backpack. You want to remind the parent. You can send out a text message reminder saying, don't forget to check your child's backpack for the permission slip. And it's 140 characters, so it's a lot like Twitter. You've got a limited amount of text that you can put in there. But you can schedule. So I can, if I don't want this to go out right now, I can actually schedule it to go out at a different date and time. Okay? They have just recently added the ability to text photos. So you're at that field trip, and you're taking all of these great pictures of your students. Why not send them home some... Um, pictures of the field trip so that the parents know what they need to ask the kid about when they get home. You know, instead of the kid saying, mm, it was okay, you know, they would have pictures of what the kid actually did so that they could start that conversation. So you have the ability to add file attachments to this now, um, and they've also added a limited ability to reply, okay? Right now, you can't reply to these messages, um, but they have added what they are calling stamps, so you could do a stamp to, and have you actually used this or you just know teachers that have used it? And this, this is a really new feature. It's just come out within the last couple of weeks. But you could take a survey, okay? So how many of you, how many parents are going to help on the field trip? And they could send back a stamp, yes, I'm helping, no, I'm not. So they've added just a limited availability to reply. But this is a great tool and it costs nothing, zero dollars, free. Love Remind. Anybody else want to share an app or extension that they thought was kind of cool? There's all sorts of apps and extensions out there, okay? You just got to kind of look through the Chrome Web Store to find what you think you might need. If I wanted to get rid of any of these apps and extensions, they kind of work a couple of different ways. If I go into my apps, okay, and I no longer want the Weather Channel, if I right click on it, I can remove from Chrome, okay? The extensions are a little bit different. If you go to your hot dogs menu and go down to settings, over here on the left side there's extensions, okay? Your extensions can be enabled or disabled. So if I did not want my email checker to pop up during my presentation, I could uncheck it still leaves it installed as part of Chrome, but it's not going to run now. If I want to get rid of it altogether, I would hit the trash can, and that's going to remove it from Chrome. Some of these extensions, like the PE one that I showed you, the Move It one, I can actually control whether it's enabled or disabled from right here. Others, you actually have to go into the settings and extensions to be able to control. So I have some that I don't have enabled. For example, this one is not enabled right now. So you have the ability to control if they're enabled or disabled as well. If they're enabled, are they automatically going to show up in that bar at the top? That depends top on the extension itself. So for Magic Actions for YouTube, for example, only shows up when you're on YouTube, YouTube but the, it's in here right here. Okay. So some of these, like Magic Actions for YouTube, if I go to Options and Options, there's all sorts of things that I can do to actually customize that player to make it work the way I want to. Some extensions have that, not all of them. That is one that has, I mean, there's just tons of things that you can do with it. There's hide ads. 
So you can try that and see if it will hide those ads at the end. Mm. But all sorts of things that you can do to customize that particular extension. Good question. Is there any security issues with the extensions or the apps? Um, the secu yes, the, yes, there are. The security issues come in. Um, they just talked about one. It's called Awesome Screenshot. Some of these extensions, when you're adding them and it's giving you that message, uh, do you want to enable this? Um, sometimes some of those extensions want access to everything in your account. And they saw that that um, awesome screenshot was actually accessing too much, like your browsing history and those kinds of things, which it really doesn't need to, to work. So there are some instances. Um, you may find a bad extension or a bad app in the Chrome Web Store. I would say that the Chrome version of the App Store is not nearly as secure as the iOS App Store, your, your, your iTunes App Store. Um, and the other thing that you need to keep in mind is that a lot of these extensions and apps run in the background. And so if you've got a whole bunch of apps and extensions loaded and you all of a sudden Chrome is really sluggish and it's not running as fast as it was, it's probably because you have too many apps and extensions and you need to lose some. And I did, I did a purge not too long ago, but you can see I've, I have an addiction. I just love apps and extensions, so I've added a whole bunch more back. But if you do notice that Chrome is becoming sluggish or slow, you would, should probably disable some of your extensions or get rid of them. But that would be, you know, that's the only security issue there might be. Other questions that you guys have? Yeah? How do you log out? How do you log out? Good question. Because I'm going to do that too. All right, anything else you want me to show you before I do this? Okay, so when you're done, okay, and if you're using a school computer, you'll want to do this, okay? If you go into your settings, You'll have an option, you can disconnect your Google account, you can also, down here under users, delete this user, and that's probably what I would do for today. And that will remove you from this account. So when I do delete this user, and there's my buzzer, it's time to be done, I'll say delete. And now Chrome is all cleaned up, back to the way it normally was. Okay, so delete this user is probably what you want to do today. Well, thank you guys so much. You were a very attentive audience even after lunch. So I wish you the best of luck on your student teaching. If you need anything, my contact information is available on that website. Don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.